The next speaker is one of our own. Now, I've had classes with the guy. He's brilliant. And, oh man, talk about being involved. So he, is, he was a vice president in USG and chairman of Dean's Council. And those are just two of the many things Sal Cochiero is a part of. And after graduation, he's returning to his high school to help out with the research program there. So he's a good guy, too. Please, everybody give a big Fordham welcome for Sal Cochiero and his talk, Me Being Me, You Being You. All right. Are we good? All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome uh, to this event, to all those watching online and via live stream. Thank you all for being here. I uh, just want to begin by first acknowledging those who helped put this event together. Um, they're dear friends of mine, and they're incredible people. And I just wanted to give a round of applause for all them. They're working exceptionally hard tonight. Please give a round of applause for all those people. So tonight, one of the things we're going to be talking about is the concept of me being me and you being you. And that is something that begins foremost at under, uh, with understanding who we are as individuals. And that begins with the learning process. Learning. It's a very uh, difficult word to define. You know, depending on the person, they may define it differently. There generally seems to be a consensus among two camps. Those who believe that learning is a product, those who believe that learning is a process. So imagine if we take this same sort of logic and apply this to our understanding of learning each other through experiences and through our relationships. So if I were to meet some of you right now and engage with you, I might understand through some small talk, through some body language, who you are today, the product that you are. But I believe that each of us is more than that. Each of us is a process and a journey. Each of us not only has a story to tell, but we ourselves are that story. And every good story requires good storytelling. Storytelling, of course, is a blend between science and art. It's a science in that we need to be true, we need to be honest, but it's also an art because we need to learn to be creative. We need to be able to see not only the painting, but the brushstrokes themselves. And when it comes to storytelling, there are few who do it better than Pixar. In 2015, Pixar gave us Inside Out, an incredibly beautiful and inspiring tale of a young girl named Riley who moves to San Francisco with her family and has to deal with the challenges of being in a new situation. Inside her head is where the movie takes place. And inside her head, five emotions control everything that she does. And we see her adapting to her new surroundings with just five emotions. The product was exceptional. It, won many, it was a box office hit, critically acclaimed, but what I found to be the most important was the process at how they arrived at something like this. Just consider the entire human psyche, memories, emotions, all of this being condensed into a movie that children can understand and enjoy. In an interview with Pete Docter, the director of this movie, he explained how they arrived at this. They began with 26 emotions, ranging anywhere from guilt to hope to greed. And through an extensive drill-down process, they were able to narrow that down to five. They found commonalities between emotions and were able to continue to drill down and down and down until they can tell a small, succinct, enjoyable story for both kids and adults alike. This is something we all do. This isn't that special. I know Pixar does it, but we all do it every day. Everyone drills down to find out what's important. Researchers do this when they're presenting their research. Students, like all of you here, do this when you're writing your final papers. You take the important parts and you try to condense it down into your introductions, your conclusions, etc. In fact, this is something that I had to do when I was coming up with this talk. I had many ideas, and I had to narrow it down and figure out what was truly important. You know, a few months back, I began a very important process that I know many of you are all going through right now. Applying to graduate schools and jobs and considering my future beyond college. And when I did this, uh, the beginning was pretty easy. I asked you, what is your biographical information? Explain your extracurriculars? Um, discuss your resume? But then I got to the doozy, the personal statement. In 500 words or less, I had to explain my academic interests, my passions, and my motivations, as well as my future career plans 
and how I plan to achieve them. This was extraordinarily difficult. This is one of the most difficult questions you can be asked, and to have to do it in 500 words or less was mind-boggling to me. I began this process and struggled through countless weeks of staying up late, waking up early, trying to find the right time to write this whole thing, and it just wasn't clicking. Until one day it hit me, maybe I'm doing this wrong. I spent so much time trying to write the perfect paper to make myself seem like the best candidate for them, when instead I should have been focusing to find out who I am as a person. Once I changed my focus from one of being a product to one of being a process for me, I felt instantly connected to my work and I was rewarded. This is something that I encourage so many of you to do. When I began that process, I started with 3,000 words. From 3,000 to 2,000, 2,000 to 1,000, 1,000 down to 500. With every revision, I learned more and more about who I am as an individual. I learned how my common, uh, how my extracurricular activities play off one another and shape me as an individual. I learned what was important and what wasn't as I continued to condense that word count. I was able to understand how there are simple, basic beliefs and motivations that persist throughout my life that have led me to the point where I am and are pointing me in the direction that I hope to be. So what I want each of you to do is just think about this idea. Very few people get the chance to do this exercise. Many of us are worried about checking our resumes and changing our, you know, altering our resumes and making our experiences make us appear as though we fit in at the place we want to be. But maybe that's not what life is about. Very few people do this exercise, but I ask you all to do it. When you do this, you'll understand more about yourself. And it is impossible for others to understand who you are until you first can understand who you are as an individual. What I want you to do is when you write this personal statement, start with 3,000 words, start with a million, it doesn't matter. Once you drill down, you'll have a better understanding. Think of all the relationships you are in with different people. Your employers, your peers, your colleagues, your friends, your relatives, your partners. How is it possible that any of them understand you if you don't understand yourself? When you write these personal statements, take your names off and hand them out to your friends, your relatives, and those that you know and hold dear to your heart. And see, do they immediately know that that person is you? If they do, congratulations, you're true to yourself. You have a great understanding. They know who you are because you know who you are. If you sit back and you realize, hmm, they don't recognize me as that person, well, maybe you're mis misrepresenting yourself. Maybe you are not being true to yourself. And if there's one thing I've learned and that would encourage other people to understand is that it is far greater to understand that there are people and places that want us and those that don't, and that is okay, than to live life as someone else trying to make someone else happy and delaying realizing that maybe I shouldn't be where I am in the first place, or maybe I'm on the right path, uh, the wrong path, excuse me. So go back and consider these things. You know, I want to consider, I want to conclude this talk with a brief discussion of this quote from T.S. Eliot from his famous Four Quartets. It reads, we shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. In all relationships, we must seek to eliminate asymmetrical information. We must seek to create a level, balanced playing field. The only way for us to have healthy, productive relationships in all that we do is if you find me being me and each of you being you. And that begins foremost with me understanding who I am and you all understanding who you are. So what I want you to do is search your heart and search your mind. And I want you to consider that question, who am I? I want you to wrestle with it, I want you to wrangle it, and I want you to tame it. Know your story and be it. Thank you all very much.